I am back in this land Paris and I'm so excited. Oh, it feels so nice to be standing here in front of the Disneyland Hotel, the entrance to Disneyland Park here in Disneyland Paris. And for those of you who've been following my channel for quite some time, you will know that I had surgery a couple of months ago and it's been a while since I've been to Disneyland Paris. So this is my first trip back. I am so excited, the weather's nice. I do have a coat with me, but I don't need it because the sun's out. Look at the blue skies up there. It is so beautiful, the atmosphere. I'm just so excited and happy to be back now. It is currently about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I only got to Disneyland Paris a couple of hours ago, checked into my hotel, and we are off to have a couple of nice hours here. And look at the beautiful, colorful flowers here. Springtime is one of my favorite times to be in Disneyland Paris. The weather's often quite nice. The flowers make it even more beautiful than normal. So yeah, so, so excited to head in. One of my tips when entering Disneyland Park is to make sure you look at all the gates before you start queuing up for no reason. Because look, this one, this one's working. I've got my pass here and there you go, I'm in. And I didn't even have to wait even a few minutes. And we're in, we've got Rapunzel on the train station over here and I'm already hearing the music too. A million splashes of colors, I think it's just started from the top of Main Street. Oh, it feels so good to be back. And Ariel, my bae, is chilling here now. The music, Main Street USA. Oh, I am feeling so grateful to be here right now. <laughs> it's currently about 18, 19 degrees Celsius, which is perfect. The night, the night is. Truly, what an amazing song. <laughs> oh, and the castle's looking beautiful down there. It's just so lovely seeing everyone smiles, and I think the weather definitely has a big part to play here, as well as obviously being in Disneyland Paris. And I mean, how can you not be happy when the song is on? Anyway, I don't have any particular plans for today. I think I just want to just go around the park, see what's new a little bit, eat for sure because I am quite hungry. And I don't think I'm going to be getting any of the sweets right now, but I did want to show you some of the new cake pops that came out a few weeks ago. Um, they're basically different colours to celebrate A Million Splashes of Colour and Symphony of Colours, which is the current season here at Disneyland Paris. I presume they all, you know, taste the same. Yeah, it says chocolate five euros each but you can get them in different colors which is cute and these are some of the other snacks that they have going on here I would actually recommend the fudge here the fudge is pretty good in this land Paris if you're into that and I've decided to quickly pop into Flora's boutique which is the shop attached to the boardwalk candy palace because they've got a new Paris range that also recently came out I think they're just bringing out loads of Paris specific merch like with this man Paris on it you know as French as it could get really uh, in preparation for the Olympics happening obviously in France in a few months time but yeah it's the aristocats here this is actually a nice quality jumper uh, from the feel of it anyway. It's 50 euros, not too bad. It's got Disneyland Paris embroidered on it in gold. You've got another Disneyland Paris merchandise here. Oh, look at that. That's quite subtle. You've got the Eiffel Tower and then, yeah, Disneyland Paris over there. Oh, new ears, actually. Wow. They've really gone out. Look at that. In the middle, you've got the castle, Sleeping Beauty Castle from Disneyland Paris, as well as the Eiffel Tower. This is definitely 100% aimed at tourists who are coming, like I said, expected to be coming for the Olympics. This is 25 euros, significantly cheaper than any of the ears that I found in Walt Disney World back in January of 2024. They also have some mugs. Let me pick one up very, very briefly. So yeah, Disneyland Paris. I mean, it's a cool logo. It's not my style at all. This is a pretty small mug too, but actually quite reasonable. Um, 17 euros this is. Yeah, I don't like my mugs to be too big if I'm actually using them as mugs rather than just decorative pieces and I feel like this is a pretty full size and yeah, the Eiffel Tower seems to be the star of this range because it's all about Paris and yeah, this seems to be more or less the range. I've just spotted a black uh, jumper as well similar to the one. Actually, could this be a spirit jersey? Whoa, this is a spirit jersey. I thought it was just a jumper like the first one that we saw. Now this is a spirit jersey. Disneyland Paris, different kind of fun to what they normally use. It's got some hearts there because of course Paris is the city of love and yeah. I, again, I'm really curious to see what you guys think of this. I feel like this probably will be very popular, this range, with tourists over the next few months, probably until the end of the year. But I would like to hear what you think about this range. Would you get this? I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Aristocats to be fair, so this is not aimed at me regardless. But uh, yeah, 
leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. Anyway, I am back on Main Street now walking towards the castle because I want to check out all the lands here. It's been a while since I've been in here and the castle's looking beautiful actually. I just saw some sparkles on there, some twinkles. I'm so excited. I also want to check out the wait times as well. Today is a Thursday. So it'll be interesting to see what it's like. Tomorrow is the birthday of Disneyland Paris. It's the anniversary of Disneyland Paris. It's 32nd anniversary, believe it or not. It's getting old. <laughs> I love it. Well, a million splashes of colors is still happening currently by the castle. So we can't get too close to the castle just yet. I love the music though. It's so, so fun. It's just, <laughs> it makes me want to dance and I can't dance. But I thought I would make my way to Frontierland instead and then just make my way around the park. But these walls as well, I thought I would show them to you. These weren't around a couple of months ago when I was last here. And I have to say, they do make the guest flow a little bit annoying, especially because it's already quite narrow in this area of the park anyway. Thankfully, most people are currently watching the show. I am hoping to make a new video talking about all the new stuff happening in Disneyland Paris recently since the last time I was here one of my what's new in Disneyland Paris videos so make sure you're subscribed for that coming up soon but these walls they're basically trying to make Disneyland Paris as a whole more weatherproof if you will because it does tend to rain and snow quite often here so they're trying to build a bit of a roof um, outside of Casey's Corner you know where the outside area is where people will sit down normally it doesn't have a cover but they're making it covered now same with where some of the characters meet right next to Casey's Corner I mean, I think it's a good idea. It's just a shame that for the time being, it's going to be a little bit difficult navigating the park, especially when it gets busier. But whilst I'm on my way to Frontierland, I also wanted to give a big shout out to one of my lovely viewers who I just met, Luca. Luca, it was so nice meeting you. He was just watching the show. So thank you so much for saying hi, Luca. Anyway, with that being said, I am now officially in Frontierland. And I've just bumped into the lovely, what's your name? Maya. Maya, did you just watch the show right now? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? What's been the best thing you've done in Disneyland Paris so far? Um, the big thunder ride. Oh my god, that's one of my favorite rides. It's so fast, isn't yeah. it? And it goes in the dark and it's so cool. Yeah. By the way, how cool are her glasses? Heart shaped, really nice. Thanks for saying hi, Maya. Give me a high five. <laughs> See you around. Awesome. Thank you so much. Take Thank care. you. Big Thunder Mountain. One of my absolute favorite rides in Disneyland Paris as well. And it is officially the best Big Thunder Mountain in all the parks that have a Big Thunder Mountain. It's so good. I would say the second best one would be Tokyo's. But um, yeah, it looks so nice and it's nice to see it open. Again, last time I was here, it was actually under construction, but I think I'm actually gonna head towards a Phantom Manor because as much as I would love to go on Big Thunder Mountain right now, and you can hear the sounds of it. Honestly, the sounds of Disney parks are a whole thing of their own. But yeah, because I had surgery um, not so long ago, I still don't feel comfortable going on any big rides, even though my surgeon has said that I can. I, I wanna wait a little bit longer just to be on the safe side. So I think Phantom Manor, will do. I always love the entrance to Phantom Manor as well. In fact, I really like the facade of Phantom Manor, the best of all the Haunted Mansion style rides out there. I think it only comes to choosing the actual ride. I do for some reason prefer Haunted Mansion as a ride, but Phantom Manor just looks so creepily awesome. And it's only a five minute wait, which is perfect. So far, the ride has basically been a walk on. I've just been walking through the pathway is getting closer and closer to Phantom Manor. Phantom Manor was awesome. I actually don't remember the last time I went on it and it's always a good time but I feel like I should probably eat because it is close to 5 p.m. now and I haven't actually eaten any proper food today so leave a comment down below and let me know if you can guess where I'm gonna head. Oh it's very sunny. By the way if you're visiting Disneyland Paris anytime from like late March to I would say late June early July and if you're prone to allergies then bring your allergy tablets. I forgot and I am struggling. <laughs> Honestly, I got to the park earlier and suddenly I was sneezing constantly, my eyes were burning and it hit me. Allergies. And the fun, funny thing is, and you probably don't even care, before coming on this trip, I honestly even made sure to like make, make a mental note to myself to not forget the allergy pills because I knew this was going to happen. 
anyway life goes on we're still having a phenomenal time and it's actually not too bad now that it's starting to get closer to the evening hours but yes food and as I'm approaching this new cart in Frontierland this new snack cart I should say you might be wondering is this what I'm gonna eat and no but I will be coming back here in the next couple of days to check it out this literally opened a couple of weeks ago again and it sells I think turkey legs let's have a look yeah turkey legs more or less and churros and it seems to be doing well since it opened like it's pretty popular and this area of Frontierland definitely needed something like this right across from Big Thunder Mountain. Is it Casa de Coco where we're going to be eating at today? One of my favorite quick service restaurants I would say although I haven't actually been back since it changed into Casa de Coco it used to be called Punta del Oro. The menu seems to have you know stayed the same though and I have just entered Adventureland. I'm no longer in Frontierland so I think this might give you more of a hint as to where I'm going. I think most of you probably already know in fact but it's a place that I haven't eaten at in a little bit of time, I want to say in a few months time. And over the course of the past year, it's become one of my favorite quick service restaurants. So let's go. And sadly, hello darkness, my old friend, it's closed. I think it literally just closed like five minutes ago at 5 p.m. So that is a big shame because I was really looking forward to getting one of my favorite meals from here. The chicken and rice meal that they bought out here in Hakuna Matata's restaurant in Adventureland about a year or so ago. It's one of my favorite things to get here in Disneyland Paris um, but not a problem because there are so many other places that I can eat and in fact another place I'm thinking and I'm hoping it's not closed is in Fancyland. Look how beautiful the Sleeping Beauty Castle looks by the way. The sun shining on it and the Adventureland trees around it. Oh, it's gorgeous and I actually really enjoy this time of day normally in Disneyland Paris when the parade's about to start because the majority of people are crowded on Main Street or in Fancyland to watch the parade and you can see Panorama Magique up there as well on this beautiful day so it makes it a little bit more quiet to get around the parks and seeing as we're here I thought before heading into Fancyland maybe we should go and say hi to our old pal here and you can already hear him oh my god he might be a little bit angry That was fun. Did you know, by the way, that when Disneyland Paris first opened in 1992, this dragon inside the castle, or underneath the castle, I should say, at the time was the largest animatronic Disney had ever built. Obviously, that was 32 years ago, so a lot has changed. Disney has built many more amazing animatronics across the world. I'd be interested to know which animatronic in which Disney park is the biggest right now, though. And just like that, we are officially in Fancyland, my favorite land here in Disneyland Paris, if you don't count Main Street USA. And it feels pretty quiet, again, because most people are watching the parade. We've got the carousel here, Dumbo in the background, of course, Snow White, which I would imagine has a maximum of a 10 minute wait. Let's have a look. It's exactly 10 minutes. That is so funny. <laughs> I'm not going to go on it now, though, because I really do need to eat. Pinocchio's is also quite quiet right now, only at a 15 minute wait. So honestly, this is a great time to come to Fancyland, especially of all the lands, because Fancyland mainly has family rides and most people with families, especially if they've got little ones, they want to watch the parade, meaning that Fancyland will suddenly become a lot emptier when the parade's on. And I was going to go to Toad Hall, that was going to be my second option for lunch slash definitely dinner today, but I just checked on the app and that's also closed right now, that also closed at 5pm, meaning that I'm now left with... Honestly, it's not even a bad option. At least the last time I was here, I actually kind of enjoyed it. Hostel de la Marionette, which is the Pinocchio restaurant here. Quick service in Disneyland Paris. And I've grown to kind of like it as well. Like I said, my last meal here was pretty good. So I want to give it another try and see what I think. You do have to give it to this restaurant though, Hostel de la Marionette. If anything, the theming, the exterior, just the details of this restaurant are so fantastic and perfect timing because look how quiet it is i did debate mobile ordering but i had a feeling it was going to be pretty quiet at this time of day because not many people would want to eat at like 10 minutes past 5 pm so this is amazing i'm so hungry at this point that anything will do like just the smell of food right now is making me happy a few moments later that was one of the fastest meal orders i've ever had here in terms of quick service here in this land paris and as i'm sure you can imagine finding a table was extremely difficult as well obviously i'm joking i'm sat literally with no one next to me like honestly this restaurant at the moment is almost empty i feel like there's maybe two percent 
of people in here, like 2% full, if that makes sense. But I did go for the chicken option. It comes with a side of fries. You can also get some salads instead of the fries if you wish to. Um, you also get a soft drink. I went for a bottle of water because it's quite warm. This menu costs 17 euros, but because I've got my annual pass, it cost me around 14 euros, which I don't think is too bad. But yeah, last time I was in this restaurant, which I think it was in maybe March of 2023, so just over a year ago, I was with my friend Eddie, and it just happened to be one of the few restaurants open. We were both quite hungry, so we came here. Neither of us are big fans of this restaurant or weren't big fans of this restaurant until last year. We both came, we both got the chicken, and I don't know if it was because we were just very hungry or what, but we both really rated the chicken last year. But it has been a year, so I'm curious to try it out again and see if it's uh, as good as I remember it to be. I mean, it's not bad. The fries are just normal quick service Disneyland Paris fries. Yeah, I think it's gonna do the job. It's gonna fill me up and it doesn't taste bad either. In fact, it's actually weirdly flavorful for what it is in a quick service restaurant. So I'm gonna enjoy my meal and get back to you to see what more adventures we can have. Well, that was my very late lunch slash dinner, definitely dinner. Um, I would say it was fine for what it was. I mean, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't anything special. Out of all the quick service restaurants here in Fantasyland, this would probably be my least favorite in fact because they do have Toad Hall which would have been my second option for the day obviously it was closed unfortunately also there's Bella Notte in Fantasyland which does like pizzas and pastas and the setting is also very nice there and the food I think is maybe just a little bit better I feel like Pinocchio's or Chalot de la Marionette it's a beautiful setting it's really lovely and it's a prime location in Fantasyland this is why it's a very popular restaurant normally but I've tried a few of the things, like the chicken's definitely the best thing here. Don't get the pretzel sandwich. I had that, I want to say about a year and a half ago. It was just so bland for what it was. So chicken's pretty good. Everything else, take it or leave it. But Mickey Mouse's queue in his Meet Mickey Mouse attraction, Rencontre avec Mickey, is currently at a 50 minute wait, which isn't too bad. So hello, how are you? Yeah, I figured we'd go and say hi to the main mouse. But before we actually fully join the queue, I thought I would show you these amazing artworks that are here inside the attraction. I don't think I'd even ever noticed them before and I've been here definitely many, many times. Look, Goofy in Feathers on the Nile. Look at his expression, it's so fun. So those two I'd already seen before, Mickey and Minnie, but for some reason I'd never bothered to look on the other side. Anyway, without further ado, let's head in. The good thing about this attraction is that even if there is a long line, I mean 50 minutes isn't necessarily short, at least you're undercover firstly and also they always play Mickey shorts on so you can watch them and it's entertaining both for adults and especially for children while they wait. I have also decided to put a stopwatch on just to see if it ends up being 50 minutes or hopefully a little bit shorter. And I'm just about to meet Mickey, I think I'm next in line, but I wanted to show you some of the stickers they've got as well, honestly the theming everywhere in this land palace is awesome, but even just in Meet Mickey Mouse's attraction, Hollywood Hong Kong Hotel, we've got Castaway Key, which I would love to go to, Club 33, The Absolute Dream, but Hong Kong, Hong Kong. Hi Mickey, how are you? Oh, so good to see you. <laughs> is it your first I time? You. No, it's been a while though since I last saw you, so I'm so excited to see you. You look amazing. And oh, Mickey, look at the shirt. Yeah, I've got, I've got your loved one. <gasps> here. It's Minnie. Please do send my love to her. <laughs> And tomorrow's the anniversary of Disneyland Paris. That's exciting, mm -hmm. I'm so excited to be here for it. Should we get a photo? Thank you. Nice. Oh, oh such a gentleman. Oh, you're so cute, Mickey. Thank you so much. Love seeing you. Say hi to Minnie. Bye-bye. Bye, Mickey. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, that was so cute. It's always so nice seeing Mickey. And from the moment I stepped into the queue until after meeting him, which is now 50 minutes. So it's actually probably a little bit less than 50 minutes because obviously you have to take into consideration the five minutes of, you know, meeting him and the moments just before you meet him kind of thing as well. So not too bad. And <laughs> shout out to the cast member who was with him as well. She was so, so lovely. So I was so excited to see him, even though it's only really been a couple of months. But um, yeah, she was lovely. Mickey was lovely. Honestly, meet Mickey here in Fancyland, even though it generally has very long queues, you normally get to spend quite a bit of time with Mickey, so it's not like, basically if you meet Mickey in Disney World, it's a lot quicker than what they do here. The characters generally tend to really take their times with uh, the guests, which is actually why queue times generally very, very long for characters, but it's worth it if you really do want to meet the character, and I felt like I had to meet Mickey today. And I'm now slowly but surely making my way towards Discovery Land, because I feel like we may as well at least say a quick hello to that land before the end of the vlog. Look at the pretty flowers. So colorful and bright 
honestly. This land Paris is always beautiful. In fact, one of my favorite things about coming here is to notice all the like greenery um, in different seasons. And of course, my beloved is a small world is waiting for me. I mean, it's a five minute way, so it would be rude not to. I wasn't planning on finishing with this ride today. I was actually hoping to go to Discovery Land and do Star Tours because from a couple of weeks ago, again, there's been some new scenes added to the ride from Mandalorian and I think Rogu's there in one of them, maybe a couple of other things as well. Anyway, I'm not the biggest Star Wars person anyway, but I was very curious to check it out. But then I had another thing, and I'm not sure it's a good idea, just because, again, with the surgery that I had, even though I've been given the all clear, I still don't feel fully comfortable going on any ride that's going to, like, give me too much motion, especially, like, you know, very sudden movements. Even though it's a simulation ride, it's still a little bit of a risk for me. So I'm going to wait until my next trip. Instead, I'm going to treat you to a small world for like the millionth time so let's go i'm not even kidding it's literally just me and one more group on the front row i'm on the very back row but three rows i think one two three or four rows actually empty in between and then there's me I feel a bit like vip enjoy small world and I enjoy the castle as well especially at this time of evening it's so nice that I don't have to wear a coat even though it's close to 8 p.m. now it's 7 45 it won't get dark until close to 9 p.m. and we're only in April by the time it gets to late June July time Disneyland Paris stays light until around 10 30 p.m. which is why the fireworks show has to be pushed back to 11 p.m. in the summer months just because you can't really do fireworks when it's bright and light outside but I love it I love daylight. I like the fact that we're getting closer and closer to summer and spring. And thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for your lovely, beautiful, kind comments over the past couple of months. You guys are amazing and I really appreciate you. I'm so glad to be back in Disneyland Paris and there will be plenty more vlogs coming. I'm only here for a few days on this trip because, like I said, it's my first trip back and I'm actually mainly here for a press event tomorrow, which if you want to stay tuned for that, then make sure you subscribe because hopefully there'll be loads of fun things coming along tomorrow including some news about the new Alice in Wonderland show in Walt Disney Studios Park which should be opening later on in spring so yeah loads to come but I've had an amazing first afternoon back in Disneyland Paris I just love it I feel so grateful being here and like I said this is one of my favorite times of year to visit Disneyland Paris from around late March to early June it's just the weather's nice it's not too hot it's spring and it's amazing it's gorgeous but with that being said i am gonna love you and leave you make sure you're subscribed like i said follow me on instagram and if you want any personalized videos as well i do have all that information down in the description thank you so much i'll see you in the next one bye